Hi, and thanks for meeting with us today. Sure, I'm Heidi Schaefer. I'm the editor of The Advocate. So uh, what is The Advocate and how long has it been around? The Advocate is a student-run newspaper um, for Minnesota State University, Moorhead. Um, it's been around in its current form, I know it's over 30 years. It was formerly known as The Mystic, but after a couple of students had kind of an incident with the administration, they, um, they got rid of The Mystic and the newspaper was reborn as The Advocate. What would you say the Advocate's mission or uh, purpose is at uh, M MSUM? Um, we actually, it, it's different than a normal newspaper, you know, like a city newspaper, um, in that first and foremost, I tell my staff this all the time, that it's a teaching newspaper. Its primary purpose is for students who are interested in going into the newspaper or um, journalism field to learn how to photograph, um, lay out pages, write stories, that sort of thing. Um, our second purpose is to serve as a voice of the students to keep the campus up to date on what's going on, as well as, you know, it, it's not just for students, it's for faculty, it's for alumni, it's for staff, it's for the community surrounding MSUM. Um, on the top of our newspaper, under our um, flag, it says that we're the community newspaper. So it's not just students, but that's usually our main focus. So how is the paper funded? Um, the paper is funded a couple of different ways. We, it is funded by student fees. Um, student fees account for a very small portion of our operating budget, though. I know compared to a lot of student organizations, just comparing what we get, it seems like a lot more. But I would say that the fees we get from student fees probably pay for 10% of our operating costs. The other is made up through advertising. Advertising is what drives our revenue and the only way we keep going, so. And you're a weekly newspaper, correct? Correct. And uh, how much work usually goes through that? A lot, and I think, I think a lot of people maybe sometimes don't realize how much it is. You know, we're a student publication. We know it's not perfect. There's, a l there's typos in every paper, but the sheer amount of man hours that go into each issue is actually a lot. Um, as editor, I spend at least 40 hours a week on the paper, in the office, talking to writers, talking to our photo editor, talking to our advertising editor, talking to our business manager. We have, I would say, probably 20 staff writers, and we run anywhere from 12 to 20 stories a week along with probably 10 photos. So we have our staff writers going out and interviewing people and writing the stories. We have our section editors picking out story ideas to give to those staff writers and then laying out their pages every week. We have photo editors editing every photo that comes that goes in the paper. Um, we have five copy editors that read over every story. Every story gets looked at eight times. And I know a lot of people th see that and they think, how are there still mistakes? But we're a learning newspaper and, you know, AP style is what we use for the newspaper. And it's, it's tricky. It's got weird stuff. And, you know, I, every Thursday when the paper comes out, I look through it and I find mistakes. And I, I, I'm like, how did we not catch that? But, you know, it, it's, it's a learning experience. I think our paper gets stronger throughout the year and then the next year the new staff gets to start all over again but that's kind of the cool thing about our paper. Could you maybe just walk through like step by step kind of what goes in a typical week at The Advocate? Sure. Um, our work weeks start on Mondays um, like most places I guess. Um, Mondays I'm in here going through all the press releases, the emails, the notes that I have for stories that we would do for the following week. So we assign out a week ahead of time and then writers have a full week to work on that. But while they're working on that, we're laying out the previous week's paper. So Mondays I get the story list. We hold um, our staff writers meeting. I assign out as many stories as we can come up with. Um, students are busy and sometimes they, they don't 
they aren't able to get a hold of the people they're supposed to and don't get the stories in. So we, we probably assign out more than we need to, but it always seems to work out. And then Tuesdays are our production day. They're a crazy day. I usually get here um, sometimes as early as 7 in the morning, and I'm here as late as 3 a.m. the next morning. I think that's the latest we've been here. Some weeks it's better than that, but, you know, not only do we work, a lot of us pretty much full-time at the paper, but we're also full-time students. I'm taking 15 credits, there's people taking 18 credits, so we have to go to class in between on Tuesdays. Um, we have four section editors and five copy editors, and so the section editors come in early Tuesday and lay out their pages, format them, put the photos in, put captions in, and then the copy editors come in and read it over, and they go through each page four times and then the section editor brings me the fully proofed page and I do a proof, sometimes two or three proofs, and then those section pages are ready to go and then we do a final edit at the end of the night, try to make sure everything's perfect, it never is, but it's our goal, and then I send it to the printers. Wednesday is our web day, it's the day we update our website, so because the, the stories are copy edited on the actual um, document that we laid out in InDesign, it's laid out in the InDesign, we have a web person that goes in and copies and pastes all the um, stories from there and gets it ready for the web editor to put it online. Um, we haven't had a lot of web traffic, which is something we're trying to change. There's comments on there. there there's such a number of things that we try to do differently for the web just because that's where a lot of newspapers are going and our website's new this year. We've had a lot of trouble with it, but we're slowly getting it ready. Thursdays are our payroll days. I go through and figure out what everybody gets paid for the week because our writers get paid per column inch and our photographers get paid per photo. And Fridays is kind of our just get whatever you didn't get done for the week because we have to start over again on Mondays. Um, I usually come in on Sunday and lay out all of the blank pages for the copy or for the section editors so they know how much space they're going to have for their stories and so forth when they come in on Tuesday. So there's a lot of work that goes into it, but we've kind of gotten into the routine of things now. So would you say the newspaper has any criticism and how do you respond to it? Oh yeah, we get a lot of criticism. Um, a lot of it not very helpful but a lot of it constructive too. Um, I think the most unhelpful thing is for people to just, you know, poke fun at it or whatever. Because like I said, we know it's not perfect. We serve a really small campus and there's a lot of times not a lot of things going on. So some of our, our stories are not that interesting or don't interest a lot of people. We do make typos. Some of the things we run are kind of controversial because you know, differing political views or whatever. Um, our professors within the mass comm department, which is the majority of our staff are in, are always very helpful. They'll tell us, you know, I've been noticing that this is happening a lot lately kind of thing. Um, our advisor, Glenn Tornell, um, is our faculty advisor, and he, we don't do it so much anymore because we've kind of gotten into the routine of things, but we used to hold weekly meetings after the paper com came out, and he would you know, instruct us, like, don't do this, this was really good sort of thing. Um, last week we had the editor of the forum come in and he gave us a really nice critique of the paper. You know, we are always open to changes because, like I said, most of us have never done this before and we know we're not perfect. So, you know, we welcome it. Sometimes it's hard, you know, I'll be sitting having lunch or whatever and I'll I kind of hate to sit by people that are reading The Advocate because I have to listen to them, you know, be like, oh my gosh, why did they run this? Listen to this, and they'll read it out loud. And, you know, it's not so much a personal thing, but it just, my staff works so hard, and sometimes it's, it's difficult to hear people, you know, say that. But it, this, is, this is a field where criticism is a part of life. Every newspaper, big or small, has tons of criticism all the time and we just have to get used to it and you know learn what we can from it. So are there any final thoughts you would like to say about The Advocate? Um, I guess kind of the big thing right now in newspapers is that 
you know, every day we hear about newspapers closing and we're lucky that we are on a campus that funds our paper well and our ad sales are still doing okay, but more and more newspapers are moving to the web. So that's, that's going to become a big focus in the next couple of years for the advocate staff. And not that I see it any time in the very near future, but I think there will be a time where there's not a paper edition of the advocate. And so, you know, our biggest thing is we want to know what people want on the website. We want to know what works, what doesn't. So that's, that's what we're working on right now. Well, uh, thank you for being with us again.